So there are a few different ways that we have of showing uh, point clouds and laser scans, uh, different point styles. The one that's on right now is billboards. Uh, you can see every point is a billboard with physical size in the world. Uh, it's always facing the camera. If you change that to points, every point is going to be a single pixel on screen. So as you get up close, you're not going to be able to see much. But as you get far away, you can actually see things in more detail. Billboard spheres is another option. This gives you a little bit of contrast between each of the points. And then boxes. Uh, again, these are ordered in the order of rendering, rendering complexity. So if your graphics card can't handle a whole lot of billboards, it might be able to handle an order of magnitude more points, for example. So one of the other options here, you can see it says it's displaying the intensity channel. Um, and so it's just interpolating between the min color and max color based on an intensity on each individual uh, scan. Um, so I can change this and have the color change quite a bit. Um, if I know the valid intensity range for my scanner, I can also tell it not to auto-compute that. Set that to something that I know. And you'll get kind of a nicer, something of a nicer look, more consistent look. So like I said, there's also the point cloud display. Um, this is going to show point clouds. So we have a whole bunch of point clouds, mainly from the cameras. Uh, so if I subscribe to the wide stereo, uh, you can see I've got points from the wide stereo. Um, uh, and this is going to update in real time. Stereo data being what stereo data is, this isn't amazing, but this is just sort of to show you that uh, what is possible. So speaking of cameras, what we can also do is show cameras. Um, and if you add a camera, it's actually going to pop up another window right here that doesn't have anything in it right now. Um, if I fill in a topic, say wide stereo, uh, you can start seeing a camera image with the 3D scene behind it. So the camera image is overlaid on the 3D scene. Um, I was trying to move the head down a little bit. It didn't look like the joystick is pairing. Uh, but so what you can see there is that the, the scans from the laser scanner uh, if you have a well calibrated system are going to show up in the right spot relative to the camera image that you're viewing. Uh, and this can be really useful for checking calibration, for checking to make sure that you're doing things right, that you've placed things in the world correctly. Uh, and so e everything in the scene is going to show up in this window. Can you move the arm up into the... So you can also see the robot model, you can see anything that's placed in the 3D scene. Uh, and they should be they should match up pretty well given a well calibrated robot. So the last display that I'm going to show right now is the TF display. Uh, so a lot of you have hopefully gone over the TF tutorials or at least used TF to some some degree. Um, and this is essentially mainly a debugging tool for seeing all of the links in your system exactly how they are in the world. Um, it's not all that useful with the names on, with the entire tree uh, set up. So what I'm going to do is disable most of them and just sort of enable the ones that I'm interested in. Um, and so like I said, this is a debugging tool. We often place frames in the world so that they can be transformed to, such as when we're, when we're doing outlet detection, we'll place a frame for the outlet so that anyone else can see it and uh, transform into it. So for each of these, you can actually you can show names, you can show axes, you can show arrows if you want to. Um, and each frame is going to, 
you can see the position and orientation also useful for debugging. So I've talked a little bit about frames so far. Um, if you're familiar with TF, you know what a frame is. Uh, it's a coordinate frame in the world. There are two special frames that Arvids knows about, uh, or not knows about, but that you, that you tell about. The first is the fixed frame. So the fixed frame is the frame in the world that Arvis transforms all of its data into before displaying it. So this needs to be a frame that is actually fixed in the world for things to show up correctly. If you choose, say, the base link as your fixed frame, then every laser scan, for example, that, that comes in is going to be showing up relative to the base link. And if you move the base link forward, they're not going to be situated in the world the way they should be. Generally, uh, we have the fixed frame either as ODOM combined or map. Um, I'm running something that gives me ODOM combined right now, uh, so I'm going to switch into that. So here, so here you can see that if I start turning the robot, the data moves along with it um, and is in the right place in the world relative to where the robot is. Now if I switch my fixed frame back to base link, this is just going to smear. So all of the data coming in thinks that it's right in front of the robot. Uh, and so you're, you're never actually going to see valid data for the most part. So I'm going to change that back to ODOM combined here. Now the other frame, uh, let me turn the robot model back on. The other frame here is the target frame, which right now is just set to the fixed frame. The target frame is what the camera, the, the view in the 3D world moves relative to. So I set the fixed frame to base link, and I move the robot around a little bit. I'm going to move relative to the robot. If I set it to something a little bit more nausea inducing, like the laser tilt link, I'm going to move relative to the laser tilt link. Um, this specific example is not all that useful, but it's good at showing off exactly what I mean. So I'll set it back to the base link. Um, so those are the two frames that Arviz needs to get told about. Everything else is done through the messages that are arriving, um, and that's how it knows where and when. It, it uses TF to know where and when to transform data. 